Hey guys, Chase Gullett here, Chase Vintage Guitars. Um, uh, recently, uh, I have had some people asking some questions um, regarding uh, neck pockets and neck angles and, you know, necks in general. So, I thought what we would do is I'm going to kind of show you guys how I take some... Uh, approximate uh, three inch by three inch um, flame maple here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out and kind of take you guys through the process of how I do these necks um, so uh, what we've got here then is um, like I said before you know it's approximately uh, I'm actually at eh, about two and seven eighths and three and a quarter. So, um, again, you know, uh, this is close and close enough. We're going to cut away most of this anyway. Most important part is that it's square, um, to itself here. So, you know, we've, uh, you know, check that and make sure that's good. Um, now on this, I shoot for quarter saw. Now, uh, I'm lucky enough that I buy 12 quarter material a lot of times. And while this isn't quite totally quarter sawn, it's really close. It would actually be riff sawn. Sorry, my lights are... There you go. Okay, so you can kind of see how the grain's sort of going. Now, quarter sawn, you want that up and down. Slab sawn, that would be going side to side. Um, this lends itself a little straighter coming up and down this way, so that we're going to work with this being face and face. Yeah, face and face, exactly. So two necks out of this one blank. Now... Ahead of time, I make up templates, um, and if you look here, you can kind of see uh, this was one of the questions the guy was asking about. So you see how this heel is actually angled, it runs up. It's a right about three degrees um, across the straight plane of this neck here. Now, I've got extra room here um, to kind of carve in my heel. And I've, I'm going to leave a little meat up here for my volute. Um, I got a little nick in this guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Uh, but, so the idea is we're going to start laying out this neck. So, we've established that we want this to be our face. So we'll be working on this from the side. Now, part of why we were concerned that this was square is because, well, we're going to transfer these marks all the way around. So, I've got my neck blank flushed up. Here at this end down here, down here, it's flushed up, and then I'm going to flush it across this face. Now, I have taken the time to lay this out, and this is what this is. This is a side view of a neck. Um, I do this on paper, typically, and then come back through and trace these. Now, I'm going to make some tick marks here, showing where my nut and heel start. Now... I've got those and I'm just tracing. You want to make sure you're holding this pretty snug um, so that it's not sliding around on you. You could tape it I guess if you really wanted to um, but I just kind of hold her steady as she goes. Um, now again this is uh, this template's getting me real close. Now the template was laid out and drawn out as you know a fuzz you know over nothing crazy just a little bit you know it's allow me to be able to kind of sand and shape so if I were to go straight raw with this neck um, you know just put a fretboard on here I'd end up with a you know a very uh, 59 style neck a real thick neck now I'm going to shave this down because I, I personally don't use those uh, um, here in my shop I mean I will if it's a special request but I tend to like my finished product around 8.4 and uh, 9.2 at the 12th. Um, so again I leave enough meat that I can kind of carve some of this back but this is getting me started. So there's our first uh, you know line there um, for that side. Now we're going to flip this over both ways. So we were here so now we're taking it boom just like that. So now we've got the headstock here on the other end and we will make those same tick marks where the nut will be and where our heel will
will stop. And again, we're tracing that out. I'm using an 05 mechanical pencil. Um, I use a lot of different pencils in the shop. Um, I like these mechanical pencils uh, for these you know purposes that need to be pretty precision. You know, you've got a you know if you've got an eighth inch wide line, it's real hard to tell you know where you're actually working. So these 05s are real nice for layout tasks and things like that. Um, so. You know, now we've got two headstocks. If you guys can kind of see that on there or not. So you see we've got the headstock here overlapping the heel. So the two are basically nested um, within each other. So now, again, we made those tick marks. And this is part of the importance of why we make this square. So now we're going to transfer these lines. So uh, we're going to line up our square here. Um, this is a handy little uh, fast cap makes this. I'm sure other companies make them as well, but uh, I like it's magnetic. So I always uh, kind of hang this guy on the uh, bandsaw. So I always know where it's at. It's always stuck to the side of my bandsaw. Um, having the magnet there is nice. It's always at like eye level. You look over. Hey, there's my there's my square. That's right where I need it. So. Again, we made those tick marks. Now all we're doing is we're transferring those across. Um, now I know we've already made this on one side of this beam, but I like to transfer this and make sure that I've got all of my marks wrapped all the way around. So uh, the reason I like to do that is because sometimes it's easier to go from the left and make a cut or go from the right and make a cut. Uh, it's, you know, not really, it just kind of depends on, uh, you know, where your layout is and, you know, are you left or right handed and, you know, things like that. So now we've got those reference points. So now we're just transferring that pattern. So we've got it on the other side of this stock as well. So it doesn't matter which way we cut or which way we're looking at it. We know that we are... Oh, you see right there, I had that off right there, so I've got to be careful about that. Um, so, that'll throw your angle a little loopy. Um, so this way, no matter how we approach, stay still, uh, no matter how we approach this board, we're seeing it, how we're going to take it out. And it's, you know, the better you get at this stuff, I guess the the more of that stuff you can kind of omit um, if you really wanted to, but I like to do it just because it gives me a constant reminder of where I am and I can always double check myself and make sure that I'm not missing anything. Now in theory, as long as everything's lined up correctly, um, this should go fairly quick and it really is. I've um, got a pretty square piece of stock here. You know, so that's another thing. Take your time, make sure that you're pieces are square um, that makes a world of difference uh, the more the more care and precision you take at each step the better off you'll be um, because you're making it exactly what it should be as opposed to just kind of winging it you know and you don't want to be winging it um, so that tends to just compound your problems later on so that transfer that line out. And there we go. Okay, so now we've got all on both sides, we've got a full view of what our neck shape is going to be. We've transferred the lines on both sides, boom, boom, we've got them. But now so we've designated this is our face, this is going to be our waist. And our heel will come here, and this will get cut at a downward angle, and this will become our um, headstock angle. So uh, now that we've established this is our face, and our fretboard will mount here and here, I'd like to come through, and I love this thing. It's uh, um, Inkra Rules, uh, but what it is, it's a, it's a protractor, and it's you know thin, so it's flexible. And part of the reason I like the 05 lead is uh, this is laser cut so that 05 will fit through there. 
um, all these little pinholes are that size so you can really precisionly lay this out but what's really cool about it is it's um, got a center line here and then the measurement scale goes out so I've got one inch one inch two inch two inch three inch three inch so on and so forth so uh, if you can line up your tick marks on the outside it makes it really easy to kind of find where your center is going to be um, so we're going to do that right now um, bear with me my these are pretty small lines and I don't have my cheaters on right now now I always make it's got tiny holes and I'll do a, a poke through at that one hole and then a couple of other tick marks so it makes it a little easier for me to see it when I'm um, looking it up here in just a, another second when it comes time to transfer these lines throughout. So you make your precision dot in the hole and then I always add a little tick mark to the top and bottom. So now I've got these two dots and these are dead center in this. So now we can transfer using our straight edge we've established the center line now I wish this was just a little bit longer and I could make it all the way to the end um, but I feel pretty confident I can shimmy that line down there and be okay um, so now we've established here's the middle of this so that right in the center here and you know we've talked about center lines in the past um, so another step which actually I should have done when I first had that set up there uh, is with this I can actually mark out an eighth of an inch offset from both sides and nice thing too about finding the square is because you've got your 90 degree mark through your protractor you can line that line up all the way through and it's really helpful in making sure that you're sitting uh, perpendicular and you're staying square and true with your layout so now we've got our two tick marks now our truss rods are a quarter of an inch so I came an eighth inch off of both sides and now I'm going to transfer those lines down through as well. Um, right there. Perfect. Okay. And again, shimmy this guy down and finish this line out. And move it down. on down and finish your out. Okay, so now we've got our center line established. Man, this light is super bright. Uh, center line is established and you can see we've come down. So now we've got our nut is this line here and that is to width of what the nut should be. And then right here is where we're going to remove for our truss rod. Um, now on the side view you can see you know here's your headstock there's your neck here's your heel um, so we've got that kind of set up and laid out so now we'll do the same transfer of marks on the back side and get this lined up the upside is once you've kind of found your center once you've got a pretty good idea of the ballpark you got to be in when you go to uh, line it up on the opposite side so it makes it go a little faster so there we go okay and we've got three tick marks and you know what I'm going to grab, I've got a three foot ruler. Not quite as heavy, I should have had this over here to begin with, I don't know why I didn't just bring it. Um, I like the weight of the uh, straight edge 
this guy here is just aluminum so you know the other one you set it down and it stays exactly where you set it this here you kind of gotta keep a hold of it so it doesn't wander off on you um, and be aware of that as well um, you don't want that happening either um, so one two and we will connect these last two dots making our final line okay and so now what we've got is we've got all of our layout lines uh, for making this neck um, now at this point uh, I'm going to go over to the table saw set it up and I will cut my channels down both sides um, I'm not going to set up the camera for that. Sorry, I'll skip that step. Um, you can cut that channel multiple ways. Uh, you can use a router table, a table saw. I like to use a table saw and uh, take uh, you know two passes and uh, remove that. Um, and you know set your depth, check your depth. Uh, but after I get those slots cut, I'll fire this back up and then make my cuts on the uh, bandsaw uh, in uh, part two of the neck making video. So. Uh, thanks for watching guys and um, hopefully you know you learned a little bit about the importance of layout and things like that um, you know I didn't go into too much about my angles um, you know that stuff varies uh, from build to build and you know whatever you need uh, again you know I draw this stuff out on paper and then make it out of MBF it's cheap if you screw this up throw it in the garbage grab another piece um, but once you've established that all this works it saves you a lot of time when it comes to laying this out. I mean, we're 15, 16 minutes into the video here, and, uh, you know, we already have, you know, our, our layout prepared uh, because we took the time to do it ahead of time over here. So, um, you know, take your time with your templates. Make sure they're correct, and it'll save you a world of trouble on down the road. So catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.